Are you a multifamily investor looking to score your next big deal? Well, hold on to your spreadsheets because in this video, three questions to ask every multifamily seller, I'm gonna give to you the three most powerful questions that are not asked very often, but can make all the difference. So you're gonna learn very quickly how to cut through the fluff and get to the heart of the matter. That's what you want. And as a result, you're gonna uncover the hidden opportunities on each deal and avoid costly mistakes that are hiding in plain sight, all with just three questions. I'm excited, let's get started. All right, here we are with question number one to ask your multifamily seller when you're working with them directly, okay? This is not with an agent in the middle, this is with you uh, working directly with the seller, okay? Question number one is, why are you selling, right? I don't know why people don't ask that question, but you need to find that out. Why are you selling? Your goal is to get the seller motivation, okay? And hopefully the result is to structure the deal or the deal terms and the pricing and everything around the seller's motivations. Makes sense, right? Why you would ask this question. You always hear me say this. I say this to our students that we mentor all the time. When you have a motivated seller, and a motivated buyer, that's you, beautiful things can happen, okay? Beautiful things. All right, now here are the three most common answers when you ask this question to the seller, why are you selling? The, the first uh, answer is, he says, I'm retiring. So you ask, uh, well, so Mr. Seller, why are you selling? He's all, I'm, I'm retiring, right? Let me tell you this, from over 20 years of experience, it's probably not the whole truth, okay? So what you have to do and what we teach our students is, you need to ask this question two more times, a total of three. And I guarantee you that you will get variations of the answer all three times. It's like unpeeling an onion, all right? Because again, what you want is you want to get seller motivation, okay? So you, he says, I'm retiring. And then let's say that you're in negotiations, okay? You're in negotiations and the seller sees you as a legitimate buyer, right? So he takes you serious. And then you ask the question again, so why are you selling again? Well, um, you know, I like to sell and um, move closer to the grandkids in Florida. Aha, okay. We have another, another, another motivation, a deeper level motivation of why they want to sell, okay? And then let's say um, once you're under contract and then in conversations you go, so, uh, you, you wanted to sell and move to Florida. How's it coming along? And then the seller says, well, I'm under contract to buy the home down the street from my son so I can be the grandkids. Aha, okay? So now we know that the seller has another property under contract, so he needs to sell to me, okay, or to you, all right? So that's why you need to ask this question three times because when they say I'm retiring, that's just part of the truth. You need to dig deeper. Okay, all right, so that's the first answer. Second answer, when you ask a seller, why are you selling? And if they say, well, I want to buy a larger property, okay? And again, in my 20 years of experience, what this means, this is code for his goals are not being met with this property, okay? So he wants to sell this property to you because it's not working for him, okay? So whenever they say that, oh, I want to stay in the business by a larger property, um, most times it's because his property is underperforming, there's no cash flow, he's having a lot of problems, he's having property management problems, and this property is just not meeting his goals, okay? So that's code for you to put up your reticular activators and start digging into what's wrong with this property and then find the opportunities, okay? All right, okay. And then number three, when you ask a seller, why are you selling, and they say, well, Peter, I own several properties and this is the one I want to sell first. Great, great. We love those types of answers because this means there's an opportunity here to buy them all at once or one by one, okay? Here, um, a great example. We have students named Eric and Maria. Their picture will appear on the screen. What they did was they um, went directly to the seller, okay, to get the off-market deals. They met a seller with, with, that owns six properties. And Eric and Maria are in the process of buying each one methodically through seller financing, okay? All seller financing, one by one. 
and they're they're on their fourth property now with him. Okay, so one, so they they're gonna buy six properties only with one seller. Okay, so that's the beauty of going direct to the seller and finding these types of opportunities. All right, got it. Okay, so that's why this is so important to ask the seller why are you selling and be a good listener. Okay, all right, let's move on to question number two. Here is question number two. Question number two is, Mr. Seller, what are you going to do with your proceeds, right? What I mean by that is, what are you going to do uh, with the profits that you get from the sale of your property? Or what are you going to do after you sell the property, okay? Very important question to ask because your goal here is to understand the second level of seller motivation, okay? This is the second level, okay? All right, here are the three most common answers that you're going to get. All right, the first answer you're going to get, the seller will say, well, Peter, I'm not sure, but I'll, I'll have to deal with capital gains taxes. Aha. Once he says that, once the capital gains taxes is a concern to him, because once you sell a property, you know, you either have to do a 1031 exchange to defer the capital gains taxes, or you're going to have to pay Uncle Sam a good chunk of change on the taxes. Okay. If that is a concern for him, this is an open door to seller financing. It's an open door to creative financing. Basically, you can say to, say to the seller, oh, okay, so I understand that you are concerned about capital gains taxes. And the seller says, yes, I am. Then you can say, well, uh, we may have a, a way to deal with that that may work for, for both sides. And of course, the seller will be open to hearing what that is. We teach our students this all the time when we get this answer, and the answer is seller financing, okay? So we can, you can help them defer some of the capital gains taxes by doing seller financing, like a master lease or some other uh, creative structure uh, that we can uh, share with the seller, okay? So when the seller says, when he, ha when, he, he, when he brings up the capital gains taxes as a concern, it's an open door to seller financing. Okay, so hopefully now you're starting to understand why it's important to ask these types of questions. And, and also too, again, you're gonna to have to go direct to the seller. You can't have an agent in between because the agent's not gonna give you all the truth here. Okay, he's protecting the seller, that's his client. Okay, the, the second most common answer would be, Peter, I'll probably do a 1030 when exchange into a larger property. Okay, great. So this means that there is no opportunity for creative financing because when a seller does a 1031 exchange, they have to take all of their profits, okay, and put it into the next property so they can buy the largest property. And with, if there was creative financing, we'd have to hold some money back, some of the money back. And you can't do that when you do a 1031 exchange and not be penalized for it, okay? All right, or it could mean, but if he proceeds with a 1031 exchange, his strict timelines could work to your advantage. What I mean by that is, if, if you ask the seller, what are you going to do with your proceeds? And he says, I'm going to do a 1031 exchange. And then he proceeds to go forward and he locates a property that he'd like to buy from the profits. And 1031 exchange has very strict timelines, meaning that you have 45 days to identify that property. And you have an additional 135 days to close. So that 45 day period is a tell period to make. So if he finds a property that he liked to buy and you're in a contract with him, you have an advantage because he needs to sell that property or he's going he's gonna to pay the penalties of capital gains taxes if he doesn't complete his 1031 exchange, okay? All right, so you can use that both ways to create win-win for both uh, the, you and the seller, okay? All right, the, the third most common answer is when you say, what are you going to do with your proceeds? If he says, Peter, I'm going to enjoy the rest of my life. That is fantastic, right? That should be all of your goals, to sell the property after a few years, enjoy the rest of your life. This is, for me and our students, since commercial is a, is a relationship-based business, this is an opportunity to nurture the relationship. Because if you're dealing with the seller directly and he says this, is it your goal to get here too, right? So why wouldn't you... Uh, you know, work on this and, and ask him, what did he do to get here? How did he get started? Tell me about your challenges. Tell me about, you know, how you got here. Build up the relationship because that will be to your advantage because when you get into negotiations and buying this deal, 
you want the seller to see you as the buyer. So if the seller can see you as the buyer and likes you, he'll do everything he can to make sure you're the buyer, okay? He will bend in negotiations. He'll give credits. He'll, he'll fix things for you because he likes you, okay? All right, so this is a relationship-based business. All right, okay, so that's question number two. Hopefully you can see how important these first two questions are, okay? All right, let's go to question number three. Here we are with question number three. This is my favorite, right? And I learned uh, this question from my mentor over 20 years ago. It still works today. Our students use it. People that would mentor gets results with this question all the time. How do I know? Because they tell me on the phone, okay? So this is so easy to use, right? So here's question number three. Mr. Seller, what does a good offer look like? Again, my favorite because you've already asked them, why are you selling? So you have some of that answer. Uh, what are you going to do with your proceeds, right? You have that answer. So now it's time to really find out uh, the price of the property that, that the seller wants. And um, if you can ask it this way, what does a good offer look like? Change none of the words, okay? Just like that. What does a good offer look like, okay? The goal here is to keep the seller from becoming defensive, okay? And number two, it keeps the asking price confrontation that you're about to get into on the low, keeps it low emotionally, okay? So here's a warning, okay? Here's a warning. You, you do not ask Mr. Seller, what is the lowest price you want? Don't ask that question because it puts the seller in battle mode. He's getting ready to negotiate with you and you're trying to get the lowest price and, um, and then and cheat him out of his property or, or did they get into that mindset? You don't want to go there, okay? Even though you, that may be your goal, you don't want to go there, all right? So instead, question three, Mr. Seller, what does a good offer look like, right? Will cause a seller to think and reflect before they answer because they don't want to lose you as a bona fide buyer, okay? Because you built up some of the, uh, the credibility, right? As, as a buyer uh, to the seller, okay? He doesn't want to lose you. So if you ask this question, he's going to think of it. Uh, you asked a good question. He's going to come back with a good and thoughtful uh, answer. Uh, in other words, it's a psychologically kind way of asking the seller what price in terms would be acceptable to him. Okay? So believe me, this works. So if you can ask the seller the first question, why are you selling? Start, you know, asking questions, building the relationship. And then what are you going to do with your proceeds, right? Again, you're digging a little deeper. You're getting to know the seller. And then finally, question three, what does a good offer look like? You're in good standing with the seller, okay? You're being respectful. You're being kind. This is a psychologically kind way of getting to the bottom point of what's acceptable to the seller on the pricing. Okay, that, that he wants. You need to try this because this works, okay? And do not change any of these words here. You need to ask it just like that. What does a good offer look like? Okay, got it? All right. So if you can use those three questions, I know you're going to be successful. I know because this is exactly what we teach our students to do. And this is why they are so successful. Okay, all right. Thank you, everyone. Again, if you made it this far with me, you are absolutely my favorite people. All right, so I appreciate you so much. If you like this video, go ahead and click the like button. If you want to get more from us, uh, go ahead and subscribe and we'll push out to you all of our content on a weekly basis. All right, thanks, everyone. If you'd like to learn more about what we do with our students and mentoring, the link will appear. Go ahead and apply. Uh, if you just want to read a book, right? Read a book on commercial real estate, my best-selling book, Commercial Real Estate for Beginners. The link will appear. Go ahead and download it. Get at it and just read it and have fun. All right. Thanks, everyone. And I'll see you at the next video.